There we go. So I think there's only one thing that most preachers will be preaching about uh, this Sunday morning, um, and that is the very um, sad events of Wednesday evening in uh, Washington, D.C. When that ugly and sadly, um, eventually deadly mob marched on Capitol Hill, there was apparently uh, at least one banner held by that crowd that looked very Christian. Jesus saves, proclaimed one particular banner. To which my immediate reaction was, and still is, not in my name. Not in the name of Christians around the world. And certainly not in the name of Jesus. The baptism of Christ is an opportunity for all of us to revisit our true identity. At his baptism, Jesus was reaffirmed as the true Son of God. And because this Son of God immersed himself utterly into our human experience, we too can have that same identity. We too can be sons and daughters of the living God, and therefore brothers and sisters of one another. As soon as we become serious about following Jesus, we assume this identity by the sheer grace and gift of God. I would like to respect, respectfully suggest that the so-called Christians marching upon Capitol Hill had lost their true sense of identity. Instead of remembering that they were first and foremost followers of Jesus, it seems to me as though they had become obsessed and consumed with following a certain Donald J. Trump. And when the followers of Jesus see their prime identity in following any politician, any celebrity, indeed any personality, it never ends well. And it particularly doesn't end well when the followers of Jesus give their allegiance to somebody like Trump. If you know anything about American politics, America was horribly divided before Trump's presidency. But after four years of his poisonous politics, that division is even worse. Many Republicans see Democrats as dangerous communists, or as many Democrats see many Republicans as fascists and racists. And it seems never the twain shall meet. Both sides seem to be completely blinded by prejudice and seemingly unable to have a civil conversation with one another. Trumpism encourages people not to come together, but rather to other, other people, whether that's immigrants, whether that's women, or whether that's anyone who doesn't agree with you. That's Trumpism. It encourages people to see each other not as brother and sister, but rather as enemies. And in this sense, the politics of Trump have been and will continue to be, sadly, no doubt, profoundly anti-Christian. My prayer for America, and especially for American Christians, is that they recover their true sense of identity. I hope and pray that the events of Wednesday evening will be a wake-up call for all followers of Jesus. To remember that above all, they are children 
of the same Heavenly Father. They are followers of the one who bids us love and embrace our enemies. And may this be a wake-up call to us too. And in fact, to Christians in any kind of democracy, where they have a choice as to where they put their allegiance and where they place their vote. May we all be reminded that our true identity is in Jesus and not in any particular politician or party. I think we began to get close to where America is during the Brexit referendum and in its aftermath. But hopefully, by God's grace, those days are now behind us. But we must all be on our guard. We must all be vigilant. And we must all remember that uh, most wonderful dignity, that most wonderful identity, which has... Um, which we've been blessed with, which we've been gifted with. As Bishop Nick Baines uh, rather pointedly identified in the days after the events of Wednesday evening, to go back to that banner, yes, Jesus does save, but he saves us not from others, rather he saves us from ourselves. Amen.